Welcome, friends, to worship at Church of the Good Shepherd in Oswego, Illinois. My name is Pastor Steve Good, and along with our other worship leaders, we are very glad that you're able to be with us today for our, our worship as we uh, seek the Lord's presence and God's comfort and wisdom and guidance for not only our day, but for our future. I'd like to share a few announcements with you, my friends. Uh, today, we have a party in the Fellowship Hall for Betty McQueen's 90th birthday. So I uh, hope that some of you are able to join us for that. It's in the afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, today, July 30th in the Fellowship Hall. Happy birthday to Betty. Our all-church picnic will be Sunday, August the 20th, and it will be after the second worship service. We will meet at the Pickerel Forest Preserve on Minkler Road in Yorkville. And uh, there will be brisket on the smoker, a taco bar, music, bring a dish to pass and just enjoy the fellowship. There are wonderful walking trails through the woods of this beautiful forest preserve. And they have a wonderful estate there as well that just opened. And uh, we hope that you can join us Sunday, August the 20th for a church picnic. Now, friends, let us hear from our chairperson of the finance committee, Ed Bradley, as he gives us the church finance report. Good morning. Here's a brief report on how the church finances stand through June 2023 in comparison to the same period in 2022. In looking at our income, we see that our total income this year is $163,892, which is 5.7% above the $155,018 total income last year. The vast majority of this income comes from the contributions made by the congregation. You can see that the contributions this year of $146,604 are 8.3% above the 135,381 received last year. These are great numbers and hopefully they will continue that way as the year progresses. Looking at expenses, our most significant area of expense is compensation and other related payroll expenses for our great staff. These expenses, which are about three quarters of the total expenses of the church, stand at $121,658 so far this year, which is 2.2% above the $118,997 expense at this point last year. This reflects the nominal increases that were provided after three years of no increases. The operating expense line includes building expenses, office expenses, and programs and missions. The cash outlay so far this year of $29,734 is 11.3% above last year's $26,711. The increase is predominantly due to rising insurance and utility costs. A great job is being done by the staff, trustees, and various committees in controlling expenses during these inflationary times. The apportionment line shows that we have paid $12,500 so far this year, which is one month behind on this obligation. At $10,000 paid last year, we were two months behind. When all expenses are added together, so far this year we have spent $163,892, which is 5.3% above the $155,708 spent last year. All in all, we have good trends going this year, both in contribution income and expense controls. It is extremely important that we continue the monetary support currently being provided to the church and increase those contributions if and when possible. If you are unsure where you stand with your own contribution activity, just contact the church office to get an updated statement. Other things that can help include being aware of proper energy and water conservation methods when using church facilities. These costs continue to rise at an alarming rate. With continued close control over spending, good energy conservation practices, and continuation of strong regular contributions, we can continue to keep all of our bills fully paid and be up to date on our apportionment obligation as well. Thank you.
Well, friends, let us take a breath now as we transition from the work of the church to simply being in God's presence, being open to God's word, being in a worshipful state of mind. And so to help us with that, let us hear this word of scripture. And this is from the 46th Psalm. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Friends, let us now worship as Cheryl Todd offers us the prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is God's mercy great upon those who fear God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like now. Your name is great and your heart is 
kind All your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His hope My time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy It is time for our joys and concerns. And as always, if you would like to share one, just uh, contact me or the church office, and we'll be sure to include your prayer request. Uh, today, we celebrate some new members that we are receiving and that we are welcoming into our fellowship at Church of the Good Shepherd. And so I would like to lift up a prayer of thanksgiving and celebration for Linda Daskowitz and for Don and Bev Bird. Uh, Linda Daskowitz uh, transfers to us from the former 4th Street United Methodist Church, and Bev and Don Bird transfer their membership from the Calvary United Methodist Church in Normal, Illinois, the Great Rivers Conference. We are so glad to have Don and Bev and Linda among us. They have already found a warm and welcoming community. They've already become involved in some significant ways, and uh, we pray that uh, you will be able to meet them in the near future if you have not already. And so for Linda, Don, and for Bev, we give thanks for their presence among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, we give our sympathy to Judy Franz and her husband, John, upon the death of Judy's mother uh, just this past week, Janice Kozlerich has died. And we pray that uh, John and Judy's resurrection faith in Jesus Christ may give them strength and comfort and hope at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends, let us continue to pray for Barb Para and family as they prepare to celebrate the life of her husband, George, whose memorial service we will have here at the church on Wednesday, August the 2nd at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there will be a luncheon immediately following, and we are looking for people that can help to either serve food or to prepare food and bring it into the church. If you can help with that. Uh, please let either Pat Rogerson or Kay Bonebreak know, or just call the church office if that's easier for you. But let's lift up Barb Para and her family, as we all remember uh, this man of God, George Para. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's continue to lift up in our prayers Shirley LeClaire and Joe Middleton for their needs of God's healing touch this day and this coming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends, we have a few birthdays I want to make sure that we celebrate this week. Uh, first of all, I, I wanted to mention 
that on uh, the 29th of July was the birthday of uh, Ava Lamb. So happy birthday to Ava. Hope it was a wonderful one. Also wanted to say this coming week, happy birthday to Jeremy Johnson, to Donna Trinko, to Tom Cross, and also again, happy 90th birthday to Betty McQueen. And as we lift these up, asking for God's blessings upon each of them in the coming year of their lives, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus shall reign. O God, we gather to bless you for bountiful mercy, for the compassion and care you extend to us. You surround us with a mantle that protects us from danger. Our breastplate is your righteousness fulfilled in Christ Jesus. You are our shield and defender, our hope and our comfort. We give you all praise as we assemble in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, let us now come before the Lord in a time of silent prayer, that we may use this time to convey to the Lord uh, those needs, those prayers of thanksgiving, uh, prayers for ourselves, prayers for others. And as we convey these prayers to the Lord, know that the Lord is listening and already preparing to respond with love, with wisdom, and with grace. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day and all the possibilities that it contains. We do not know exactly what is in front of us, but we do know that you are with us and that you will continue to be with us. Lord, looking back, we thank you for the blessings of this past week, for the resources that you gave us, for the love for the strength, for the peace of mind that uh, without which we would have had such a, a more difficult time, we give you our thanks. Gracious Lord, uh, we can never make it on our own, but as we lean upon you, we know that you give us brothers and sisters, even strangers to help us through difficult times. 
Lord, so many times uh, when we seek new life, we find that the way is blocked. Blocked by those who would judge us. Blocked by those who would uh, question us. Blocked by those who would convey to us that we are not loved or that we are not needed. And Lord, forgive us when we have believed that. But remind us that uh, by your love, we are loved. We are needed. You do use us as fellow ministers, disciples of Jesus, to shed your light upon the world just as Jesus shone his light upon us. Gracious Lord, we ask that you would remove the barriers that are in the way between us and the path of life that you have laid out for us. Uh, remove what is in the way between us and our journey to your heart. Lord, take away the stumbling blocks as well. Uh, and, and certainly when we do fall on our way, we ask that you would be there and, and, and pick us up again, dust us off, and give us what we need to take even the next step. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for hearing us, for receiving all of our prayers this morning. And as we give them to you wholeheartedly with, with trust and with faith, we respond in prayer as Jesus has taught us to pray to you, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first reading is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to the Lord. Sing praises. Tell of all God's wonderful works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord's presence continually. Remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and judgments God has uttered. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant, children of Jacob, God's chosen ones. And our gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterwards, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Amen. I'd like to share with you a sermon that uh, you might think uh, should be around Easter time, but uh, you'll see why today is also just as appropriate. Roll that rock. Friends, can you think of a time when you uh, have seen some giant stones in your life? You know, maybe maybe you uh, were by a quarry and you saw some huge stones that had been uh, uh, chiseled out, or maybe maybe you saw some huge rocks while you were on a trip somewhere far far away. Uh, sometimes an excavator will uncover one in a former farm field while moving earth for a new home, and then the eventual home owner will proudly display this huge boulder in the front yard uh, as a sign of pride for all to see. Well, our gospel reading today highlights a huge stone, uh, and it's in the Easter morning testimony. Of course, the stone that was miraculously moved to allow the resurrected Jesus to rise up, to walk away from death, and back into the lives of his disciples forever. Not only that first generation of disciples, but extending all the way to our generation. And in case you're wondering, yes, I, I am preaching an Easter sermon in July because I, every Sunday is a celebration of Easter and the resurrection promise of Christ that extends to us all. So yes, it is appropriate to speak at Easter in July. That giant stone that was rolled away from Jesus was not just made of rock, but it was also made of unbelief. It was made of hatred. It was made of betrayal. It was made of apathy. That's what gave it its weight. But none of those things could pin Jesus into the grave. He died and rose again, that we might live with him for eternity. Amen. 
But in this life, we still have to face those heavy stones that threaten us from having abundant life. Grave stones that block our path and seal our lives from the way God intends us to live them. Now, for some of us, that, that big stone that gets in the way may be something to do with our job that has taken over our lives. For others, it is envy for what does not belong to them. For yet others, that great stone may represent an anger, an anger that simmers just below the surface. For some, that stone is a deep depression that seeks to keep us in the dark. Sometimes the stone is simply the feeling of being overwhelmed with the materialism that affects us all, all the things, the stuff of our lives, what we have and what people are trying to sell us. One of the comic strips I enjoy reading every day in the Chicago Tribune is uh, entitled Baby Blues, and it's about uh, young parents who have three children. Uh, one of these comics uh, just makes me chuckle and nod my head uh, about the reality of materialism that we all deal with. Uh, the comic strip starts off by showing uh, a little baby crawling on the ground, pushing her brother's toy truck. The older brother turns around, yells at the baby, don't touch my stuff. Meanwhile, that same brother has been using uh, another toy truck to run over his sister's doll, causing her to turn and say to him, don't touch my stuff. But at the same time, that girl is rummaging through all the papers in her father's briefcase. And while this is going on, he enters the room and he says, don't touch my stuff. And through this whole chain of turf protection, the mom comes in and, and is wearily picking up neglected items all over the floor. And she moans, oh, we have too much stuff. That's what happens when materialism runs amok. Whatever that huge stone represents in your life, though, uh, as long as it blocks your path from following Jesus, uh, you cannot truly experience the salvation that Jesus offers you. In baptism, our old selves die with Christ, and our new self is raised with him. That's the language of the scripture. Uh, but still, at times we may feel ourselves as spiritually dead, or at least with a very low pulse rate and in the spiritual intensive care unit. Our spirit is struggling because of circumstances either created by others or created by ourselves, or simply just by living life on earth, uh, a situation that has blocked our path. And as a result, we feel trapped. And nobody likes that feeling, right? Maybe you look around and you feel like, oh, I'm in the wrong career. How did I get here? Or I'm in the wrong neighborhood. I just don't like, I just don't like my neighbors. Um, maybe you feel like your family does not understand you. Or perhaps you never really healed over the death of a loved one. Whatever your difficult situation is, out of frustration, in the midst of that, you may have at one point quit going to church, prayed less, read the Bible even less than that. You distanced, you distanced yourself from the faith community, and ultimately, you felt distant from God. So what do you do in this situation? Do you try to move the stone all by yourself? Well... You find when you do try, you can barely budge it. It ought to move and let a little light in, but then your strength gives out and it rolls back right into place to plunge you into darkness once again. Baseball great Pete Rose experienced something similar 
you know, after he broke Ty Cobb's record of most base hits of any baseball player in history, Pete Rose had nothing else to achieve. Now, that was his life goal. He had reached a high point in his life rather early, and, and now his path was filled with harmful temptations. He had retired eventually as a baseball player, and consequently, he, he lost his focus. He lost his direction, and he quickly lost himself in gambling, to be specific, uh, seeking artificial thrills to fill the void he felt in his life. Pete Rose was even willing to cross the line of no return by betting on baseball. Huge no-no, and it always has been. I said, Rose, I didn't think I'd get caught. See, he had lied about gambling on baseball for 14 years, and it ruined him. Uh, he is still banned from the game that he still loves. Rose was trapped behind the stone of temptation and, and lack of purpose in his life. He tried to roll that stone away by himself, relying on his own strength as he had for his career, um, but he utterly failed. Now, to roll the stone away, it takes a concerted effort, uh, many times by people of faith, a community of believers willing to encourage you, uh, to keep you accountable, to teach you, and to love you. Uh, and it takes God's help. For with people, we know that many things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Back in 1944, Reverend William James started a Methodist church in New York's Bronx neighborhood. Uh, it was there that he learned to minister to the gangs and the street people, uh, those who seemed to be living hopeless dead-end lives, uh, but Reverend James let them know that he genuinely cared about them and did not look down upon them, and as a result, many responded in positive ways to his ministry. Reverend James and his fellow Christians ultimately rolled the stone away from many dead-end lives, uh, saving 3,600 boys and girls, men and women from homelessness, gangs, poverty, or drug addictions. He knew that they needed help to roll that stone away. So Reverend James would help people complete their drug treatment programs. He would enroll them in GED classes through the church. He would help them enroll in college. He would help them find housing part-time jobs, and scholarship assistance. Uh, much of Reverend James' ministry was also spent in Harlem, so he was well known in, uh, in these neighborhoods and beyond in New York City. He was the author also of several hymns, including one hymn in our own United Methodist hymnal, and that is entitled Easter People, Raise your voices. We have sung that many times at Church of the Good Shepherd. Reverend James knew that that, 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 that rolled away stone allowed each of us to become part of the Easter people. And that's what we seek to be every day. Now, Howard Hendricks remembers the huge stone of having a bad reputation and low expectations that held him down in elementary school. His fifth grade teacher, Miss Simon, she used a big rope to tie the active boy into his chair. Yeah. Then she taped his mouth shut and she told him, now Howard, you will sit and be quiet. Yeah, I know, I know. She'd be arrested today if she tried to do that. But as Howard entered the sixth grade, the first thing that his new teacher, Miss No, said to him was, oh, you're Howard Hendricks. Huh. 
I've heard a lot about you. And then she startled him by saying, and I don't believe one word of it. See, uh, Miss No, she had a way of building up. She had a way of encouraging her students to bring out the best in them. Uh, years later, Howard reflected. He said, that year I found the first teacher who, who ever convinced me that she believed in me. And, you know, I never let that woman down. I would knock myself out for her. I would work and do all sorts of extra projects. My most vivid memories of that class are occasionally looking up at the, the door in the classroom at that little window pane and seeing Miss Simon, my fifth grade teacher from the previous year, peeking in to see this thing that had come to pass. And here I was sitting and clothed and in my right mind and working. Uh, says Howard's friend, Dale Galloway, reflecting on this, by, by believing in him and, and treating him as she would want to be treated in his place, Miss No became an instrument of God to get him turned around and headed in the right path. But before Howard could be set toward the right path, it took Howard, Miss No, and God to roll that stone away that had been blocking his potential as a good student, as a valued person, as a child of God. Friends, is there a heavy stone that's blocking you? Blocking that path that God wants you to take? If you find a heavy stone that's blocking that path, ask God and ask a fellow believer to help you. Don't try to do it on your own. Do you see somebody else who it appears is being trapped right now by a huge rock and, and maybe they don't even realize it? Offer your help knowing that you are an ambassador of Christ. Because Christ was freed from death, we have the promise of eternal life with him, and even the hope of being freed from the dark prisons of our lives. All praise be to God, who offers us this gift, and who rolls our rock away. Friends, let us pray. Gracious Lord, as you created that miracle for Jesus to roll that rock away, release him from the prison of death, from that which blocked the life that you intended to give him. Lord, we ask that you work a, a different kind of miracle with us. Rolling away that rock, that stone that is blocking us from following you, that is preventing us from experiencing abundant life with joy. Lord, we need your help. And as you roll that rock, as the light can come in to pierce our darkness, Lord, then we can respond. We can respond with joy. We respond with giving our offerings. We respond by, by helping others. We respond by committing our lives to seek your heart day by day. So we ask that you bless our efforts. And bless our church, the church of the Good Shepherd. And as we lift up this prayer, we do so in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.
Again, I would like to thank Ed Bradley and for the finance report as well for he and his committee that watch over that part of uh, our church's life. Um, thanks to our musicians and our singers for bringing the beauty to our time of worship and the inspiration as well. And, and thank you for being a part of this, for setting aside this part of your day uh, to be able to worship with Church of the Good Shepherd. And uh, as we prepare to leave this place of worship, let us do so knowing that we are receiving the peace of Christ for this day and for always. Amen. Mm -hmm.